Hi everyone, my name is Shen Yi Wu. Today, I'm going to be talking about how racist macaques preferentially attend to intermediately surprising information. I'm going to be arguing that this is evidence that the capacity to adaptively seek maximally useful information is not uniquely human. I will argue that the search strategy reflects long-standing evolutionary pressures that have been presented since at least the time of our last common ancestors. But in the first place, I should explain why a search strategy is necessary. What you need to consider first is that the world is infinitely rich with information. There's more information than we can possibly attend to and make sense of. So to solve this information overload problem, intelligent organisms must have a method for organizing their search for information in the world. Many psychologists before us have suggested one possible searching strategy, which is essentially seeking out learning material which is a little bit more complex than what we currently understand. The idea of this so-called U-shaped attentional theory is that when the information is too simple or predictable, it offers little to learn from, and when the information is already complex or con uncertain, it is beyond the learner's capacity to process. Therefore, Adaptively learners should preferentially pay attention to information of intermediate complexity. This selection strategy will prevent learners wasting time on information which is already known and also information which is already complex given their current knowledge. In previous work like Kid Adult, human infants demonstrated that their lookaways from sequential events could be predicted by the surprisal value of events in the sequence. Specifically, their attention was U-shaped as theorized, showing that they exhibit selective attention to events of intermediate surprisal. While this pattern has never been observed outside of humans, there is some evidence that the strategic information seeking applies to non-human primates more generally. For example, the work by Tommy Blanca and Ben Hayden has shown that macaques are willing to sacrifice some, some amount of water reward for information that offers no strategic advantage in gambling game. It remains unclear, however, whether macaques exhibit the same U-shaped attentional seeking strategy demonstrated by human infants. This is important to know because it will tell us whether intelligent organism at large possesses a general mechanism that can track information complexity and deploy attention adaptively. So in this study, we employ and adapt the infant paradigm with racist macaques. We used eye tracking techniques to investigate whether racist macaques are able to allocate their attention and how they did this. Unlike most previous work on curiosity in macaques, we employed a freewheeling paradigm without rewards tied to any particular responses or behaviors. In the experiment, we had five male juvenile racist macaques as the subject. We use single-sex macaques in order to avoid fighting and overmating opportunities among subjects. We presented the macaques with color shape on a computer monitor that appears to pop up from behind occluders according to sequences that we designed. When subjects watch this visual stimuli, we recorded the eye movement with their head fixes. This display were designed to allow us to construct a reasonable probabilistic model to capture the macaque's expectations. In each trial, we presented one of 80 possible visual sequences. All sequences were presented to all subjects in a randomized order. In each animated display, there were three boxes with randomly chosen spatial locations on the screen. Each box hid a unique and a random object, such as a green star or a yellow circle. In each event within the sequence, one of the three hidden objects pop up for 750 milliseconds and back for 750 milliseconds in some random order without overlap or delay. When each object was at its peak, subjects receive a small amount of water spurt regardless of where and the weather the subject was looking so that we can test for their spontaneous preference and avoid possible learning effects. These sequences were designed to vary in terms of their statistical properties for each pop-up event. The pop-up probabilities of each geometric object varied 
if a different sequence is observed. If it is observed, for example, if you observe a sequence like this, green star, green star, green star, green star, you might expect that the next item is likely to also be a green star. So, if that is what you see next, this example of a very predictable item in the sequence. However, other sequences had less predictable items. For example, if you see the same sequence start again, four green star, but observe something differently, say a black triangle, but would be that would be example of a less predictable event in the sequence. So to capture the unexpectedness of each public event, we combine we compute the surprisal value. To quantify it, we use ideal observer models following the method in Kit et al. paper. The model begins with a simple prior corresponding to a to a learner's implicit belief that each of the three objects is equally likely to pop up before making any observation. Once the sequence presentation begins, the model estimates that the surprisal value of the current event in the sequence by combining the simple prior. With the previously observed event to form a posterior or updated belief, then we took a negative log of this estimated probability, which gave us the surprisal value of the current event. We also computed two types of surprisal values. So the first one is the unigram, which treat each event as statistically independent, and also a brightgram statistic, which track the conditionally probability. On the immediately preceding events. So, in order to capture macaque's attentional pattern, we computed three types of behavior measures. The first one is reaction time, which tells us how fast the macaques look at the currently active pop-up objects. This is a standard measure commonly used to detect agents' expectations. We can use it here to determine whether. They are tracking statistic in the scene, despite no any explicit rewards given for doing so. The second one is predictive looks. This sequence are unfolding rapidly with no delay between events, but we also examine whether the macaques might be looking sometimes in advance of the objects popping up. Finally, we look at lookaways because this is the measure we use in the infant paradigm. It is important to know that here. That unlike the infant paradigm, this macaque's version is unfolding non-contingently, meaning that the sequence keep unfolding over time, no matter whether the macaques are looking or not. This is different from the infant paradigm, in which infant had control over the display and could turn them off with their inattention. We aren't expecting to see that here, since lookaway don't terminate the sequence in our macaque's version, but we wanted to create a way of examining it here. So we define a lookaway event as when more than fifty percent of monkey speciation during a pop-up event were either to blank areas of the display, off-screen, or whenever a monkey closed their eyes. We analyze all these three behavior measures as a function of the surprisal value of each event in the sequence, which we estimate using a textbook probabilistic model, a Dirichlet multinomial. In our analysis, we also evaluate the statistical significance of each variable using mixed effect linear or logistic regression with both linear and the quadratic surprisal slopes. The relationship between the surprisal、uh, surprisal estimate and the behavior measures was visualized by generalized additive model, also known as GAM. This plot shows a U-shaped relationship between macaque's reaction times and the surprisal value derived from the model. This plot shows that macaques are quick, quickest to attend to the events of intermediate surprisal. The raw data behind being behind the raw data being according to surprisal value appears in purple. The dashed lines show the fit of a generalized additive model in green, with 95% confidence intervals in black. Vertical ticks marked on the bottom show surprisal value attained in the experiment. And for the plot on the right, this is a version in which we control for other factors like whether the object is a repeat, distance between the current and the previous pop-up object, trial number, and the item number in the sequence. 
we can see that the U-shaped relationship still holds when these variables are controlled, as well as shown by the significant linear and the quadratic terms in the control regression. We don't see We don't see the same significant U-shaped function for the bigram version of the model, suggesting that macaque's attention is governed uh, is governed more strongly by the unigram statistic than the bigram ones. This is potentially interesting since the opposite was true in the in human infants. Here we look at predictive looks for items that are appearing for the first time. In this analysis, we wanted to know whether macaques might preferentially predictably sneak peek at boxes that had, hadn't opened yet, a behavior sign of attention on this item. We find that for first appearance, macaques are in fact more likely to predictably look at an as if yet unopened box before its first appearing when it is believed to be more likely to occur, in other words, when the surprisal value is low. Macaques become less likely to sneak predicted peaks at unopened boxes as their surprisal value increases, suggesting that they are less likely to predictably look when they do not expect it is likely a box will open. The finding suggests two important things. First, it is further evidence that macaques are spontaneously tracking the incoming statistic and using them to form expectations that guide them behavior in the absence of overt rewards. Second, it is evidence of information seeking, wondering about the contents of box that have not opened yet, but could, that information seeking behavior is moderated by the likelihood of the box opening. In our analysis of look away as defined as more than 50% looking of the active object, we do not observe significant quadratic trend for either the unigram or bigram models. The unigram version of the left may appear U-shaped, but the quadratic term isn't significant in our regression analysis. Again, this is perhaps not surprising. This is perhaps not surprising, since unlike in the infant version, looking away in this version does not terminate the sequence. But it is perhaps helpful to know that the U-shaped look away attentional trend might depend upon the learner maintaining some control over what they see. So we find that racist macaques adaptively seek maximally useful information. The result of our experiment showed that racist macaques track stimuli statistic in the absence of a word rewards and goals. They are able to rapidly update probabilistic beliefs as they make new observations and, like human infants, selectively attend to intermediate surprisal. In closing, we argue that the fact that the strategic information seeking patterns are shared across human and non-human primates suggests that they reflect an evolutionary Asian capacity for adaptive regulation of information gathering. Thank you so much for watching.